Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 30th of April. India's COVID-19 count crosses 33,000 mark, recovery rate over 25%. Maldives reports first COVID-19 death. And veteran Bollywood actor Rishi Kapoor passes away at 67. And now for all the details. India's health ministry officials said COVID-19 recovery rate in the country has increased to over 25% as the total number of cases jumped to 33,050 on Thursday. This comes as the second phase of nationwide lockdown comes to a close on May 3rd. As the second phase of a nationwide lockdown is scheduled to end on May 3rd, the total number of coronavirus cases in India rose to 33,050 on Thursday, while the death toll reached 1,074, according to the Health Ministry. Health Ministry officials in a press briefing on current coronavirus situation in the country on Thursday said, COVID-19 recovery rate in India is 25.19% and doubling rate of positive cases has slowed further to an average of 11 days. Of the total number of cases in the country, 8,325 people have been cured and discharged from hospitals so far. The number of hotspot districts have also come down to 129 from 170 across the country. Recovery rate के अंदर हम एक progressive trend observe कर रहे हैं, जैसे कि आप लोगों को इससे पहले भी बताया है कि 14 दिन पहले का अगर recovery rate देखें, तो वह 13.06 percent था, जो कि अब बढ़कर 25 percent के ऊपर पहुंच गया है. यह एक बहुत ही पॉजिटिव साइन है। मीनवाइल, इंडिया के इंटीरियर मिनिस्ट्री हैज इश्यूड अ फ्रेश सेट ऑफ गाइडलाइंस टू लेट माइग्रेंट वर्कर्स, स्टूडेंट्स, टूरिस्ट एंड पिलग्रिम्स हु वर स्ट्रेंडेड ड्यूटी द लॉकडाउन टू गेट बैक टू देयर होम टाउन्स। द मिनिस्ट्री सेड एनीवन विलिंग टू बी ट्रांसपोर्ट U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has praised India for lifting export bans on critical medicinal supplies, including pharmaceuticals used to treat COVID-19 patients. Addressing a press briefing on Wednesday, he said Washington was discussing restructuring global supply chains with India and other Indo-Pacific friends. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on Wednesday praised India for lifting export bans on critical medical supplies, including pharmaceuticals used to treat COVID-19 patients. Addressing a news conference in Washington, Pompeo called the move an example of working together with partner countries to tackle the challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic. With nations around the world battered by the dependence on China for vital supplies during the COVID-19 pandemic, Pompeo has said, that Washington was discussing restructuring global supply chains with India and other Indo-Pacific friends. Our conversations certainly involve global supply chains, keeping them running smoothly and getting our economies back to full strength, and thinking about how we restructure these supply chains to prevent something like this from ever happening again. Uh, one example of our work together is with India. It's lifted export bans on critical medical supplies, including pharmaceuticals used to treat some COVID-19 patients. Pompeo over the last few weeks has spoken with India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar over the phone at least four times. Meanwhile, India, the major producer of hydroxychloroquine, has promised to supply the drug to 55 countries, including Bhutan, Bangladesh, Maldives, Sri Lanka and Myanmar as well. The medication is being used in COVID-19 therapy. Political activists have expressed concerns over organized sex rackets being run by banned terror groups who are targeting local women in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. Recently, Pakistan-based terror group Jamatud Dawa's top men Sayyid Samit Bukhari was also arrested for operating a prostitution racket 
in the illegally occupied region. Political activists and human rights organizations have raised concerns over organized sex rackets being run by banned terror groups who are targeting local women in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. United Kashmir People's National Party or UKPNP has said that several incidents have come to notice in the illegally occupied region where local girls and women have been abducted, raped and filmed by terror groups for blackmailing. We have always highlighted this issue that there are banned organizations, terrorist organizations, बड़ा सोफिस्टिकेटेड नेटवर्क है वो लोगों को रिक्रूट करने के अलावा ये यंग जो टीनेजर्स लड़की लड़कियां हैं लड़के हैं जो यंग विमेन हैं उनको ये ब्लैकमेल करते हैं वीडियोस बनाते हैं फोटोज बनाते हैं फिर उनको थ्रेड करते हैं कि हम आपको जो है ना अगर आप हम जिस तरह हम आपको कह रहे हैं और बार-बार उनको एक दफा जिसकी वीडियो बन गई उसको ब्लैकमेल किया जाता है कि आप आए वरना हम ये जो है ना सोशल मीडिया और पब्लिक में इन चीजों को लेके आएंगे रिसेंटली पाकिस्तान बेस्ड टेरर ग्रुप जमात उद दावा स्टॉप मैन सैयद समीर बुखारी वाज आल्सो अरेस्टेड फॉर ऑपरेटिंग अ प्रोस्टिट्यूशन रैकेट इन पाकिस्तान एडमिनिस्टर्ड कश्मीर नासिर अजीज खान अर्ज द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी टू इंटरवीन he expressed concern that when the world is fighting against COVID-19 pandemic, the people of Pakistan-administered Kashmir are facing severe threats by banned terror organizations backed by Pakistan government. Afghan Health Ministry officials have warned the coronavirus infections in Afghanistan will peak within the next few weeks. This came as the country reported 120 new cases of the virus in the last 24 hours on Wednesday. Coronavirus infections in Afghanistan will peak within next few weeks, Afghan Health Ministry officials said on Wednesday, as they reported 120 new cases of the virus in the last 24 hours. Public Health Ministry spokesman Wahidullah Mayar said, the positive cases are increasing day by day and we have critical weeks ahead. The number of total cases reached 1,949 on Wednesday, while coronavirus deaths reached 60. 252 people have recovered so far, according to the ministry. Local media reports suggested the warning comes as people are failing to take the limitations seriously amid Islamic holy month of Ramadan, and many of them have been moving freely within the country's cities, including capital Kabul, where well, lockdown has been extended for two more weeks. Was chida karantin ragale de daga chida ekso karun tanishira watale no pada ka wach ki ta sutsa nazar la redir dafsos khabara da no Allah taala de daga parvara kata meshte pa khater da tool Islami nale na au khususan da Afghanistan na chide balki da tool dunya na de da virus Allah taala la. In past months, efforts by Afghan government to persuade people to maintain social distancing have proven futile amid a general lack of adherence to safety guidelines. Sri Lanka's government has reimposed curfew in all districts except for the high-risk zones from Thursday until May 4th, sending the country into an island-wide curfew. The island nation has so far reported 649 COVID-19 cases. Sri Lankan government has announced that the curfew will be imposed in all districts except for the high-risk zones from Thursday until May 4th, sending the country into an island-wide curfew. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's office in a statement said the curfew which will be imposed at 8 p.m. on April 30th will be in effect until 8 a.m. on May 4th. The curfew will be reimposed in the districts other than the districts of Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara and Putalam. The government had previously extended the curfew in the high-risk districts of Colombo, Gampaha, Kalutara and Putalam. Meanwhile, Sri Lanka reported 30 new cases on Wednesday, raising the total number of people contracted with coronavirus to 649. According to the Health Promotion Bureau report, 506 are active cases receiving treatment at hospitals, while 250 individuals are currently under investigations in hospitals. Seven patients have died and 136 patients, including the Chinese tourist, 
who was the first COVID-19 case detected in the country in January and discharged last month, have fully recovered and been discharged from hospitals. Maldives has reported its first death due to the novel coronavirus with the total number of positive cases standing at 280. Minister of Health Abdullah Amin at an emergency conference held during early hours on Thursday confirmed the death. The victim was an 83-year-old woman from capital Mali. The woman's sample was taken earlier and her case was confirmed positive only after she passed away, marking the first death caused by the local community spread. The island nation has so far recorded 262 active cases of coronavirus with a total of 17 recoveries. Veteran actor Rishi Kapoor, who had a glorious career in the world of Indian film industry spanning over four decades, passed away at the Mumbai hospital on Thursday. The 67-year-old actor had been diagnosed with cancer in 2018. Indian actor Rishi Kapoor, who starred in celebrated movies such as Bobby and Mera Naam Joker made by the Bollywood film industry, died on Thursday after a two-year battle with leukemia. The 67-year-old actor had been diagnosed with cancer in 2018. He was admitted to the Sir H.N. Reliance Foundation Hospital in Mumbai City on Wednesday. He remained jovial and determined to live to the fullest right through two years of treatment across two continents, his family said in a statement. Skyen of a famed industry family, Rishi Kapoor is survived by his wife and two children. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Bollywood megastar Amitabh Bachchan and several other celebrities took to social media platforms to pay tributes and express their condolences to the versatile actor. Uh, Rishi Kapoor sahab belonged to such a family who ko belong karte the, jinka hamari Indian cinema ko bahut bada contribution hai. Rishi ji, एक बहुत ही bubbly, एक बहुत ही प्यारे, एक बहुत ही confident, हम इन्हें romance का बादशाह मानते हैं। हर किस्म के role, हर किस्म के characters, जितने भी उन्होंने फिल्में की, वो सब हमको याद हैं। Rishi Kapoor's death followed that on Wednesday of another Indian actor, Irfan Khan, who had roles in films such as Life of Pi and Jurassic World and had also suffered from cancer. Wedding amid a nationwide lockdown to contain the spread of coronavirus disease outbreak cannot be an ostentatious affair. Understanding the gravity of the situation, a couple in India's northern Jammu city tied the nuptial knot while abiding by the rules of the lockdown. A couple in Jammu City tied the nuptial knot earlier this week while abiding by the rules of the ongoing coronavirus lockdown imposed to curb the spread of the virus. The couple Mayank Gupta and Palki Ratra wore masks and sanitized their hands after which they tied the knot amid the ongoing lockdown. Gupta and Ratra's big day was meant to be a huge celebration in front of hundreds of happy guests in India's Himalayan territory of Jammu and Kashmir, but the deadly coronavirus wreaked havoc on their wedding plans. The pair, however, remained unfazed with the outbreak of the virus and instead performed the ceremony with a handful of family members while practicing social distancing. We have used masks and sanitizer. We have used distance. We have used the members of the house. We have used the Weddings take on outsized importance in India where families spend huge sums on elaborate multi-day ceremonies often involving thousands of guests. But in recent weeks the rapid spread of the coronavirus that has already infected more than 33,000 in a densely populated country of 1.3 billion has dampened the celebrations. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन